All right, let me point out a few things about the lab. So this first lab is pretty basic. Uh, we're trying to get familiar with using Bunsen burners and know how to adjust them and use them safely. So uh, every lab has a purpose statement you know, associated with it. This one's quite simple. To become acquainted with laboratory equipment, specifically the Bunsen burner, learn the proper techniques for using it and adjusting it. Often the lab will tell you a little bit about safety for this lab. We got to wear our goggles today. You don't have them yet. I'm going to give it to you in about five minutes. But uh, we have to wear goggles when we're working with Bunsen burners and glassware. Um, long hair, it's got to be tied back today. So if you don't have a hair tie, I have some extras up here, but we have to tie them back whenever we're working with flames. First thing you're going to do is examine your burner carefully. You don't have to disconnect it from the, the gas jets, but I'm just going to do this so I can walk around with it. Um, you want to note how the amounts of both gas and air are controlled in the Bunsen burner. So there's really two moving parts on a Bunsen burner. Uh, the first one, here, I'll go to a picture of it. First part is the barrel that sticks out. This is the barrel and it's threaded onto the base. When the barrel is closed, down, ready, tidy, and, and fully threaded on here. All you see at these holes on the bottom are threads through these holes at the bottom. That's how you usually want to start the Bunsen burner with nothing but threads, no air getting in what we call the air intake adjustment. If you, after you start the Bunsen burner, what you'll be doing is slowly opening that up, lefty loosey, unscrew that. And when you do that, you'll see that there's holes here at the bottom and air can start to get in here. This is where the oxygen gas goes in to mix with the methane gas so we get a good fire. If you were to unscrew it too far, you would see that that would just come off and you don't want that to happen. But I'm just going to take this off for a moment. That's the barrel and the air intake holes at the bottom of the barrel. The other adjustment is at the base here at the bottom where the gas adjustment valve is. Now that gas adjustment valve is gonna control how much gas can come through the hose and into your Bunsen burner. It's called a needle valve. You can call it a needle valve or a gas adjustment valve. Usually you would not unscrew it all the way, but let me just show you what that looks like. You look at the shadow here, you can see that there's a pointy end to it. And when you have this valve screwed all the way in, it plugs up the little hole at the base of this burner. And if that hole's plugged up, no gas is getting through. And as you loosen that valve, you allow more and more gas. So this restricts the amount of fuel coming in or methane gas coming in. Righty tighty, it's all the way shut down. That hole is plugged, nothing's happening. To get the gas to flow, you gotta give it a few turns lefty loosey counterclockwise. And now the gas can come through and then you can fine tune the height of the flame by opening and closing that valve as well. So we're gonna put that back together for a moment. The buzzing sound in the ceiling is the uh, gas is on at all the stations. That's a good sign. We're always plugged in, we don't usually unplug them. Uh, the sparkers, you got to produce a spark, otherwise you're not going to like these things. And we like to start them with the gas, uh, the air intake closed off, but we do have to have gas coming out the bottom. So when you turn it on, the valve at the side here, it's off when you're 90 degrees to the hose. So my hose is coming out this way. This is off. That is off as well. If you go all the way to one side or the other, it's off. But when you're in the middle, then it's on. And you wanna turn it on full blast. So you're gonna line the hose and this valve straight with each other. So have the sparker ready to go. If it's not making sparks, it's not that good. Of course, if your partner wore out the sparks already, then you're just gonna sit there sucking up stinky gas the whole time. But um, 
it makes sparks. Once you uh, get the gas going, you gotta be ready with that sparker. You don't wanna wait too long. I think many of you have had the opportunity to light a gas grill or watch some family member light a gas grill. And uh, you know, they get the gas going on and they're sitting there clicking the sparker and all of a sudden whoosh, and the whole thing you know, makes a big fireball. These will do the same thing. If you let the gas run and you're not ready to spark it, or you let, get the gas on and you're sitting here like this and nothing's happening, uh-oh, now you're just filling up a big explosive gas cloud. If you can't get it started within like five seconds, you should probably turn off the gas, let some of those fumes dissipate. Ooh, that smells good, doesn't it? Woohoo! Anyway, that makes, then try it again. So the first thing that should happen is because you have the air intake closed off, because this is closed and no ox air is getting in or oxygen is getting in, you should start out with an orange flame. And we can play around with the bottom valve to figure out how much orange flame we want. You know, you can have just a little gas coming through or a lot of gas coming through. This stays full blast. You control how much gas goes through with that gas adjustment valve at the bottom. Orange flames, they're not that hot. I mean, you can sit there with your hand and just, yeah, they warm up your hands, but they don't really burn your hands, right? No? You didn't know that? All right, so, so the first thing is, so the first thing is orange flames aren't that hot, not compared to a blue flame, which I'm going to show you in a second. The other thing about a the other thing about an orange flame is if you look at the bottom of this uh, evaporation dish or evaporating dish, it's kind of a little bit dirty right now because I forgot to clean it between classes. But if I take that and I put it on an orange flame, or maybe it's on a ring stand, you know, it's sitting there uh, being heated for a long period of time. Orange flames are really dirty flames as well. Not only do they not burn as hot, but they also produce a lot of soot. So when methane gas doesn't burn entirely, some of the carbon is left with no place to go and uh, doesn't take long and you get that black soot layer. You don't want that all over your glassware. If you had a beaker above this, same thing would happen to it. This is a dirty flame. What we would prefer is a hotter, cleaner flame. So one of the adjustments that you'll do next is you're gonna unscrew the barrel and let more air into the air intakes. So I start to unscrew that and you'll notice that it starts to change color. I'll turn off the lights so you can see that a little bit better. This is a little bit too tall as well. I'm gonna just turn down the gas a little bit. But as I let more air in there, the orange starts to go away, goes from being a luminescent flame to a more invisible flame. But I want to get to the point where I get a two layer, sturdy two layer flame. Notice it's not quite as wispy as it was a few seconds ago. And now it's starting to become more rigid. And as I get in here like this, now I've got a two layer flame. I got a flame that has a light blue inner cone and a darker outer frame around it. So that's what we're going for. I can fine tune it a little bit more. I want you to try to get it to the point where you've adjusted it. Maybe you got about a three inch, two and a half to three inch uh, light blue cone in the middle and maybe a five to six inch darker blue cone around it. That's a really hot adjusted flame. I'm not gonna wave my fingers through that because that one burns. That's almost a thousand degrees hotter than the previous flame. So it's a lot warmer. So as you're doing this, you're gonna be asked to do a few things. Um, the directions, the front page of the procedure will walk you through everything. This page is just directions, by the way, guys. I don't collect this page. All your work is on here. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is label the parts, the barrel, the air intake, the gas adjustment valve. You can draw a flame above this bunch of burner that I put in there for you and label the flame showing a well-adjusted flame just like this. You can use the colored pencils at the center table if you choose to, but you're gonna to wanna to label the, this, that's worth a point each. 
You're going to record observations about what happens when you make the adjustments. Like when you open the air intake, what does that do to the flame? When you close the air intake, what does that do to the flame? When you open up the gas adjustment valve, lefty loosey on the bottom, what is that going to do to the flame? And likewise, if that's opening it, this is closing it, what does that do to the flame? Let me point this out. We already did this equation earlier today, but I always help you out with balanced equations at the beginning. So here we've got a word equation. We're going to take methane gas, oxygen gas. Those are our two fuels. The methane coming from these gas jets, this is the same stuff you use to heat your hot water at home and, and your furnace at home. Oxygen gas coming from the air, this is going to produce carbon dioxide. compound and water in the form of steam. That's why you don't see it, but water is being produced. Whenever you burn something, it produces a lot of water as well. It's just always in the form of invisible steam. Now, in the equation format, we've used the chemical formulas for all these compounds. So we'd say CH4, which is a gas, put up parentheses with a lowercase g after it, is reacting with oxygen gas. It's not oxygen atoms, it's oxygen O2 molecules, the compound. That's what we breathe, that's what we burn. We get CO2, which is the gas, and it's water, vapor, which is the gas as well. And like I did a little bit earlier today, we also want to make sure that we got the same number of atoms on both sides. So we use coefficients to balance it. The thing I want to point out about this is these two adjustment valves are basically controlling the two reactants. The gas adjustment valve is controlling how much of this you have. The air intake at the bottom of the barrel is controlling how much of this you have. And to get a perfect flame like this, you need one part of this, two parts of that. You need a one to two ratio for those two things. Where did it go? So we're trying to get that perfect one part to two part ratio that the balance equation says that we need. And that's why we're manipulating all these things to try to get that. And we got the two layer inner flame, the hottest flame, it's also the most cleanest and most efficient. There's no soot with this. It produces a minimum of uh, dirt and soot and things like that. And it gives you that hot flame. On this side, you got a couple questions to answer. It even tells you how many points each question is worth. They don't all have to be perfect sentences, but it does have to be clear what you're saying. If it's in your head, that's great. But if it's not on paper, I don't know what you're thinking. So what you say is what I'm grading you on. Make sure you answer the question completely. Um, so how do you go from a whisk, uh, from a orange flame to a blue flame? What do you have to do? What would the adjustments be? What happens when you open and close things? You did that on the previous page. You just have to answer it here again. Two reasons why we don't want the uh, yellow flame and why the blue flame is better, two reasons. Where's the hottest part of the flame? Be specific. I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. And there's a conclusion statement here. Um, you should basically look at the purpose of the lab and say, say how you met the objectives of the day for this. So we're trying to figure out how to adjust the Bunsen burner flame and find the hottest part of the flame. You can explain in one or well, probably two sentences, maybe three sentences, how you got that. Here's the last thing I got to point out, and then I want you to get you going because it takes you at least 20 minutes to do this. At your table, I'm going to drop off a piece of copper wire. I got a whole bunch of them here. You're going to take your crucible tongs, grab onto that piece of copper wire, and after you've played around and you got all the other questions answered, you got the flame adjusted, and you got that two layer flame in here. 
You're gonna take that hottest flame, you can take a piece of copper and you're gonna to try to figure out where the hottest point is on this flame, exactly where is the hottest part of this flame. So you can start at the top, you can go to the bottom, you can go on the inside, the outside, but somewhere in here, there's a really hot spot for this, uh, for this flame. I like using copper for that because copper's melting point, which is about 1400 degrees Celsius, copper's melting point is about the hottest part of this flame. So when you get close to the hot part of the flame, it will turn red hot. The faster it turns red hot, the hotter the part of the, you know, the hotter the flame is. And if you take the, the tip of the copper wire and put it at the hottest part of the flame, the tip will start to melt and form a copper droplet, like melting ice, like an icicle dripping. It, you can melt this copper in exactly the hottest part of the flame. So I want you to figure out where the hottest part of the flame is. Be specific in how you label that. Maybe on your picture on the previous page, draw a flame like this and label what part of this flame is the hottest part of the flame with an arrow pointing to it. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna tie back your hair. We're gonna be careful with the flames. When you're done with the copper wire, we'll just throw it in the garbage. And uh, just make sure you put back all your equipment back in your lab doors since we now know what's supposed to be there. Let's keep it there. You guys can begin. Oh, I gotta get you guys there. Don't move. You'll turn the lab in tomorrow because you've got the beginning of class. Uh, for goggles, I have Sharpies at your lab table. Um, you're gonna want to put your name on the top of the, the goggles, and then we'll put them in your lab door that I mentioned before. Block 4A, 4B. I'm gonna pass up the goggles. This is my favorite part. Thank you for catching three partners. This flap and just kind of loosen that one up and pull the long ones, and you can loosen it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be painful to wear that. Yep, you gotta wear them in the lab. Let's go. You got about 20 minutes to do this. Pony's right there. They might be so